Andrew is a distinguished graduate of the United States Air Force Academy class of 2021. He is also the 2021 recipient of the World War II Glider Pilot Committees and 94th Flying Training Squadrons G is for Guts Award. He majored in law and also, just like uh, uh, his brethren Cole, minored in Arabic while at the academy. Andrew was the 94th uh, Cadet Squadron Commander during the fall of 2020, and now he serves as a Lieutenant and active duty glider instructor pilot in the 94th. Uh, and before, and hopefully we'll have another opportunity to say thanks, but if we don't, Andrew did 94% of the detailed planning on this end, along with uh, uh, Mrs. Overman and Mr. Overman and the committee, Andrew took care of almost all of the detailed planning from lodging to a schedule to getting people upstairs in, in elevators and on and on to the Mitchell Hall staff in front of all the cadets. So thank you, Andrew, and over to you. Hey everybody, uh, like you said, I'm Andrew Kreitz. I'm a second lieutenant of the 94th Flying Training Squadron. Uh, and I was lucky enough to uh, receive the G is for Guts Award from the National uh, World War II Glider Pilots Association. Uh, that would, I feel really lucky to receive that. You know, I spent a lot of time as, my, as a cadet just trying to improve things and uh, make things better. And uh, I never would have thought it would have uh, resulted in, in receiving this award. So I'm very thankful for that. I just wanna thank the association for uh, giving me a chance to talk today. Uh, it's truly an honor. And also thanks for making this day possible. It, it took a lot of effort to get to today, uh, but I'm, I'm glad that we made it. And, and thanks to, to, to Jeremy to making today happen today uh, as well. I couldn't have done it without you. So I was asked a brief on the state of the 94th and I found really quickly when I was creating uh, this brief that that's a, that's a very dynamic question and it's got a lot of different answers. Um, the nature of the question changes based on, on who you ask it to, everybody interprets it differently. And the answer can change really quickly too, from day to day, uh, from you know who's in the squadron to, to who's not. And so there's a lot of different ways we can look at how the 94th is doing right now. Kind of the, the first and easiest way, but also the worst answer is, is uh, literally what are we uh, doing today? Um, we're flying today, we've flown 36 stories today, hopefully all safe and, and motivational for the students. And uh, hopefully, uh, at least a couple of them have been uh, initial solos. Uh, cadets who've never flown a plane uh, before coming to the academy, getting a chance to fly it all by themselves. And uh, so hopefully that's happening. The sailplane landing area is open. So today, the 94th is open for business. But um, I don't think that's the answer anybody here is looking for. Uh, it's a little too simple. It doesn't really tell us how the 94th is doing. So uh, another way to look at it is, uh, is a real uh, operationally focused uh, way of looking at it, um, something that's that's really data driven, and that can give us a little bit of a better answer. And then, you know, this is program completion. How far along in our various syllabuses and uh, student classes? How far are we on the path to getting them all complete? And in that regards, we're doing really well. AM two fifty one is the program where we take uh, new cadets and uh, in fourteen flights or less get them from maybe somebody who's never even been in a plane before to somebody who can fly it solo all by themselves. And with this first round of students, this semester we did really well. We got 97% complete. And uh, obviously we want that to be 100, but for me, uh, getting within 3% of that is a, is a smashing success. With AM461, that's our program where we take a select group of cadets, you know, usually somewhere, somewhere from 50 to 80, maybe they soloed in 251, and we get them within 80 flights to where they're now teaching other cadets. And they're ahead of schedule. And let me tell you, that's a good place to be because uh, when Charles Lindbergh came to Colorado Springs, he must've come in the summer. Uh, he said it was, it was great to fly here, uh, but come you know, right about now, mid-October, things are gonna start getting pretty terrible in terms of weather. So we're ahead of schedule and that's a good place to be with AM461. For our advanced soaring teams, uh, they're, they're doing really well too. We've got two teams, uh, our aerobatic demonstration team, they, they fly advanced aerobatic maneuvers in the sailplanes and our sailplane racing team. Uh, that's a team that flies uh, really long distances, really long times off tow, trying to go as far as possible, as fast as possible. And they're doing great. Uh, there's a room in the squadron right now that's full of trophies from the national uh, aerobatic competition uh, because uh, we kicked some butt there and, and that's really good. And we did it while staying safe, which is really kind of the ultimate goal here. But uh, that really just covers the operations side of, of the 94th. And I think anybody who's been in really any organization will tell you, you know, for example, in a business, 
there's a lot more than just profit in the bottom line. Uh, how do people feel about the company? How do people feel uh, about the people they're working with, where the company is going? That all matters a lot. And in many ways, it matters a lot more than just the numbers. So a better way to answer the question, I think, is talk about uh, who we are, where we've come from, where we're at right now, and where we're trying to go. So with who we are and, and where we've come from, you know, I, was, I did not fly gliders in World War II, um, but I've talked to some people who did. And uh, I think uh, I know glider pilots pretty well, and I can tell you we're cut from the same cloth. Uh, both people, both glider pilots in World War II and glider pilots now um, have, a, have a real thirst for education and making themselves the best pilot they can be. Now we take a more formal look at that today. Um, our students spend a lot of many hours uh, deeply studying some complicated regulations in basically a classroom environment. And that's different than probably the experience-based learning of the past, though both are equally valuable. Um, but the goal between those two groups is still the same, be, be as educated and as, as smart on the plane as you can possibly be so that you can bring preventable mistakes down to a zero. And uh, we're, we're cut from the same cloth in that regard. Another way is uh, we're both groups of pilots. And uh, if you've, if everybody here has had the honor of, of meeting pilots and you know, we're all kind of the same. We all get the same uh, thrill and nervous excitement and, and anticipation when we sit in and strap in and get ready to go. And uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, it, it may, it's not the same kind of danger today, but, but I, I promise you the, the thrill or the, the, feeling, the, the feeling of butterflies in our stomach, uh, that has not changed. And so that, that's who we try and be, is people who are excited to fly uh, whenever they go up. For where we're at right now, we've got common victories between uh, the winds of World War II glider pilots and the pilots of today. Um, both groups uh, were, were winning when it came to doing some massive undertakings. Uh, it's as shocking to hear, let's try and train 6,000 glider pilots in a span of a couple of years as it is to hear, let's, let's try and fly 17,000 safe and motivational sorties in the span of a year. And both groups uh, are doing really, uh, did really well at that and are continuing to do really well at that. And we're also both winning with regards to creating a volunteer spirit amongst, uh, amongst our people. You know, in World War II, 8 million total Americans signed up, volunteered to go to war then. And uh, today we're still creating that same volunteer spirit. Cadet IPs uh, choose uh, to go through the rigorous programs and become an instructor pilot, uh, knowing that it's gonna really conflict with their rigorous academics and uh, challenging military curriculum. Uh, they don't really get, they don't get extra money out of it. Uh, they get to fly, but really they take on a lot of work on a volunteer basis and it's something to be commended. Also, uh, a more recent victory in creating a volunteer spirit, um, as you all know, uh, the United States is in the middle of evacuating a lot of folks from, uh, from Afghanistan. And the Department of Defense stood up a couple tent cities across the country. And when the time came uh, to the 306, uh, they were asking for volunteers to go deploy and help set up these tent cities and help these people get back on their feet. Uh, our squadron gave the one, uh, the sole volunteer from the group to go deploy and make uh, that, that, that undertaking happen. And, uh, you should have seen the, the room when uh, they asked for volunteers. Uh, it, was, it was a big group of lieutenants and almost every hand immediately shot up. And it was, it was uh, heartwarming to see that we're still doing well at creating a volunteer spirit. But where we're going, we're, we're facing some problems that uh, are, are kind of new. Um, we've gotten really good, like I mentioned, that at flying a lot of story, stories very safely. We have a very low mishap rate, uh, but we don't see that same success when it comes to uh, we, we see a, a larger number of unhappy students and unhappy IPs, and we're, we're still trying to figure out how to get, replicate that success operationally uh, on, on the culture side of this country, to sort of improve the organizational culture is what some people call it. And nationwide, not just at the squadron, we're, we're struggling with, with a generation, young generation that is, that's really tired and uncertain about the future. For them, it's, it's kind of like living in a washing machine. Uh, it's always loud. Uh, it's always hot, and uh, the same thing keeps happening over and over again. So how do we get uh, this generation to be like the generation of the past? I think a lot of people, if you asked them, you know, could you get 8 million uh, young people to sign up to go to war today? I don't think so. And that's not necessarily those folks' fault. Uh, the generation is tired and certain. We need to find a way to move past that as a country. So how do we do that? 
it seems to me that the best way to make that happen was is to focus both at the, our squadron at the micro level and in our nation at a macro level on our purpose. At the 94th, that purpose is to train, motivate, and inspire the next generation of military aviators. If we can get that purpose in the forefront of every instructor pilot's mind, uh, we're going to find that it's, it's pretty magical. It's, it's like this magical well of, of energy and motivation. Um, think about a time when you had a very clear purpose in life. Your goals were crystal clear and you knew what you wanted to accomplish. I'm sure you found that uh, you could do just about everything. So if we can, if we can get that with the, uh, the young generation uh, nationwide as well, right now, this is a call full of people who uh, lived very meaningful, very service-driven life. And if we can get uh, every uh, older person to enter into an interaction with a young purpose with the purpose in mind of motivating the younger generation to that same ideal of, of service and volunteerism, we're going to find that uh, a lot of our problems are going to magically take care of themselves because now we've got a whole generation of folks that are motivated uh, to to make this country a better place. So, but how do we get uh, how do we get that purpose of, of motivating folks uh, to the forefront of our mind? I, I think this comes back to another really strong bond between the glider pilots of uh, World War II and the glider pilots of today, and uh, it's really embodied in this quote from General Eisenhower on the eve of D-Day. Um, both groups, uh, glider pilots of World War II and of today, uh, served in the military. And uh, it, the military truly uh, is something that everybody's looking at, um, not only as an ideal, but as just you know the no kidding person who needs to defend liberty. And if we keep that in the background of our minds where, hey, you know what I'm doing at the 94th may seem kind of silly sometimes, you know, just trying to have some fun in a, in a plastic plane, may seem kind of silly, but if we keep that larger purpose, motivating uh, kids today so that they can, no kidding, defend liberty later, we're gonna find it a lot easier to get that purpose of inspiring and motivating them today uh, at the forefront of everything that we do. And so I hope uh, I'm about to leave the squadron um, and, and go on to other things, um, but I really hope you know uh, we can pass that on to the next generation of cat leaders in the squadron because um, uh, it's a place that um, I like a lot, I know a lot of people love and uh, I wanna see get stronger every day and every year. So with that, uh, I'll open the floor to questions about anything. You can uh, ask a question about this uh, brief, um, about the 94th uh, specifically, about the Academy, uh, really anything you wanna know uh, about the 94th, uh, I'm your subject matter expert today. Everybody. So uh, please ask away. Andrew, I've got kind of a, a multi-part question. Uh, what's next for you, assuming it's a, a flying assignment? Do how, how much difference do you think it will, will have made that you have the glider experience? Uh, I, I really, um, it's almost <laughs> impossible to describe uh, how big an impact uh, it's been. Uh, if I had never uh, come into contact with the 94th, I'd be going into pilot training basically completely blind. Uh, and I'm still not that good of a pilot, but I'm definitely better than uh, what I would have been without the 94th. So I hear success stories from people who've been through uh, pilot training and they say that uh, uh, getting this initial contact um, was huge. And so, uh, yeah, we got to keep it going. Andrew, uh, did I see that on your slide that 6,000 cadets are trained every year, or that was when they stood up the 94th, that was the original goal was to train 6,000 gliders, or what, where did that number come from? No, sorry, that was actually um, the goal of uh, um, troop carrier squadrons in World War II. Uh, I reviewed some historical documents, and uh, the, the decision was made in 1942 to pump uh, 6,000 um, more glider pilots through the program before the war ended. Are there uh, any other questions? So, Andrew, thank you very much. And I also just want to echo what uh, what Colonel Lushness said. Uh, th thank you for all of your help setting this up. We could not have done it without you. <laughs>